Hello, thank you for joining us. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar. We are ready to begin. Today's webinar is part of a NGN is here, what faculty need to know webinar series brought to you by Odin and Sigma. I'm going to turn it over to Rick Garcia to say a few welcoming words. Good day, everyone. I'm Rick Garcia, Chief Executive Officer with the Organization for Associate Degree Nursing. It is truly a pleasure and an honor to welcome you all to our presentation today by Tina Rayfield. Thank you for joining us. This is the second installment in a five-part webinar series on the next generation and CLEX. Odin is very excited to be partnering with Sigma Theta Tau International to bring you this new educational series that will guide faculty through strategies to foster students' clinical judgment. Each Tuesday, now through April 25th, subject matter experts from across the country will be presenting different considerations and approaches for preparing your students to be successful on the Next Generation NCLEX, or NGM. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you on an upcoming webinar. I will pass it back over to Linda. Thank you so much, Rick, for that uh, warm welcome. We want to let you know that today's webinar is eligible for one contact hour. Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing is accredited as a provider of nursing continuing professional development by the American Nurses Credentialing Center's Commission on Accreditation. The speakers and planning committee members have disclosed no relevant financial relationships. To receive contact hours for this NCPD session, participants are required to attend the webinar and log into our learning management system to complete an evaluation form. Information on how to access this will be emailed to all registered attendees approximately one week after the webinar. This webinar is being recorded and will be available via the Sigma repository within a few business days. Following the presentation, if we have time, we'll have a question and answer session. You'll see on your Zoom webinar control panel that you can send a message through the Q&A feature. This is where you can type in any question you'd like to pose to the presenter. Be sure to hit send so the message makes it to us. Please use the Q&A feature to ask questions and the chat feature to interact with other participants. We'd like to thank our speaker for sharing their expertise with us today. Our speaker today is Tina Rayfield. Tina is the president of uh, Sylvia Rayfield and Associates Incorporated, a nursing consulting company that has been an integral part of nursing education for greater than 40 years. The company has been a long-term supporter of the Organization of Associate Degree Nursing and is a fierce advocate for associate degree educators. The company's strategy for making the complex, simple, and fierce determination to be proactive in healthcare facility opportunities to be exciting and motivational speakers. We're so glad to have you, Tina, and welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. Okay, well, welcome everyone. Uh, I am uh, very excited to uh, be here with you all and I'm looking forward to the presentation today. 
I've been asked to speak about a particular uh, segment of the next generation. So today's concentration will be actually quite literally on item, item development, and blueprinting. Uh, as you uh, uh, more than understand that there are several segments to the next generation that are being offered through Sigma. And I'm uh, going to review just one or two things that were highlighted greatly in the first one, just to make sure that in case you are a participant who joined us today for the first time and haven't had a chance to catch the first one, that we all step off in this space in, in the same place uh, so that it all makes sense. Um, so these are the identified learning outcomes associated with your continuing education today. We'll actually look at the each type or technology type that is posed by the National Council State Board of Nursing uh, for the next generation. We'll also uh, look at next generator, uh, generation items in using a simplified approach for the development of your items as you begin to write them. And then again, as we go through examples, will even speak to the scoring uh, rules generated by the next uh, generation from the National Council State Board of Nursing. So with that in mind, let's remind ourselves what the goal would be in terms of item writing and test development, which to me uh, would be about student outcomes. It would, it's, it's extremely difficult for some folks to say to themselves, well, I, I don't wanna teach to a test. Uh, but the reality is the National Council has done an extraordinary job of researching what new nurses need to look like at graduation in order to develop their own exams. So if we take a look at how they're doing what they're doing, then we can also be comprehensive in what we need to provide for our nursing graduates, not just what they need in our own communities, but what they would need generally anywhere they go, uh, regardless of what state or what nation they're in. So student outcomes and their success on this very uh, well-developed exam to me is a goal. I would hate for them to be great nurses, but they can't get past this exam because they haven't had an opportunity to try their uh, sea legs on when it comes to these types of questions. I also want to make faculty, my second thing is to make faculty um, comfortable with evaluating the questions they see that are provided, but also in developing your own content, your own questions. These have to be not only developed for your evaluation tools or exams, but also have to be practiced within the core of your curriculum itself. And I'm hoping in every way possible. So let's take a look at the definition provided by the National Council on Defining Clinical Nursing Judgment. Remember that it is a combination of several things, the critical thinking that we've always attempted to do, but it is also about using that critical thinking in our decision-making or clinical thinking. So a combined iterative process that, that generates the best possible solution. When I speak to faculty and students, it's uh, this one really narrows down since it is a study or a question regarding a particular client with data. This truly gives us an opportunity to really see understanding in a, in, in a clinical way much better. Okay, so with this definition, I'd like to take a look at what you are accustomed to. All those who've been working in nursing education have this down. You have it down in your fundamentals. You are working hard to have each student know what it is. And, uh, and frequently, many of you who are in fundamentals and beyond are actually writing questions in each one of these segments to make sure students are, are um, able to accomplish that. I, I challenge you that the next generation is so similar that you don't need to relearn anything else. 
you can connect to it very easily. And actually, to me, it refines this just a little bit and brings about a little bit better understanding. So let's take a look at the clinical judgment measurement model. If you are looking at information from the National Council, you can find this in several places presented both online video and in their written work associated with the next generation. So let's start with the first one. Uh, the terminology used is Q recognition. Uh, many of you would call these assessments, so they fall under that assessment model. And I've used color to help show where these fall itself. Then in analysis, we have two things that fall from the clinical judgment measurement model, and that would be analyzing cues and then actually deciding if there is more than one thing that is wrong, then how do I prioritize what it is? Um, then the next one plan, the wording that's used in the next judgment model is actually generating solutions. To me, a definition of the plan. Uh, implementing would be take action. And then, of course, the final looks like evaluating outcomes looks exactly like what the other was. So here you have it. This is not unlike what you're used to. You don't have to relearn. You, uh, the only thing to recognize in your testing when you're evaluating is now that we're asking students to a, a slightly higher bar, not to just pick everything, because everything is important to a new nurse graduate, right? I have to get it all. We're asking them to look at the patient and make decisions about which one of their pathologies may need a higher, uh, need higher assistance first. So let's take a, a quick second to think about that. Um, in your own clinical practice, when a, a diabetic comes in the door, say to emergency room, they don't all look the same. So we can't teach to a generalist diabetic. We can certainly teach in the beginning to that. But as they go on in their practice, we have to discuss the fact that when they come into the emergency room, what is the priority for the problem they're having today? Is it because their blood sugar is 500? Or is it because they have a, a large infected wound on their toe? Or is it because of a GI problem. So essentially, we're going to take the time to develop these students in a way that they can have all three of these problems, vomiting, a blood sugar of 500, and a, a toe on their sore, and make decisions about which one, we're going to, of course, take care of all of them, but which one is created that needs to be analyzed first or cared for first. So um, it's actually a lovely, lovely model. It really is. So let's take a look. First things first, case scenarios is going to be important for the next generation for you to decide. Uh, yeah, and you can do it anyway. There are a lot of books out there, a lot of uh, online tools that will give you case studies. You can develop your own case study. Um, remember that when the National Council started this journey, they brought in uh, a, uh, both clinic, clinicians and educators and had them just develop case studies first. And then they developed the questions later. So as you go through uh, your education practice here, it would be an important thing to save your scenarios. You can create new questions in a later time by looking at the scenarios you have and cut the amount of time that you have when it comes to um, uh, developing new items. Uh, so I'm going to give us some practice for that. Remember, designate the concept that you're planning to teach. I am going to give us an example of diarrhea of unknown origin here very shortly, but, but it doesn't matter what the concept is. Insert your curriculum here, insert what it is you're teaching here and develop the concept on your case scenario. Add context and data. Those are gonna be the cues that we hope that the students will learn to uh, decide which ones need attention and which ones can wait. Uh, time pressure, environment, history, medical record. Uh, then we're gonna ask questions along that um, clinical judgment measurement model. Um, I, I know it may not 
uh, be lovely, but I've come to call that a six pack on occasion. So if you hear that coming from a mouth, that's what I'm actually referring to as the clinical judgment measurement model. Uh, all, all six of them that we did right back there. And then unfold treatment plan with new data to allow the opportunity to evaluate so you can unfold as you move along. Many times what's on the left side of the screen will have all of the information and how the word, the, how the question is being asked would cue the participant who's taking the exam, the student in your case, to go over and look at what you're asking them to look at. So if they're if you're asking them to look at assessment data, then they would go to assessment data. If you ask them to look at medical history, then it, they would go to medical history. So I don't have that kind of technology using PowerPoint. I just want you to recognize that that as you put it into whatever um, test platform that you have, you have options. So let's get to that dreaded technology. This, uh, this is part of, as an educator, our part to understand greatly. If a student knows the information and they can't answer appropriately with the technology, this would be a travesty. Uh, it would, it can stop some uh, graduates from being successful on the NCLEX. So paying attention to each one of these, making sure that over time in your own courses that you use each one of these technologies to um, create your questions with will allow that to happen. So I'm so invested in that that I have actually developed questions in our diary of unknown origin in multiple ways for the same style of question, just to show you that most of these, not all of them, but most of them can be used anywhere in the clinical judgment measurement model. So let's take a look at these. Uh, they're all listed here uh, from the National Council at SIP. So uh, if you need to refer back in the, in the future, you can look at these. Matrix, there are two kinds. There's a multiple choice and a multiple response. There are highlighted items. In other words, you can highlight text within, uh, within a paragraph or text within a table. Then there's extended drag and drop. Um, these, this is where you can, uh, we are accustomed, this is similar. To me, this is one of the most similar to the previous exam questions, which we're not getting rid of. Uh, and those would be ordered response. In ordered response, though, in the exam that we have been accustomed to before April 1st here, uh, we had five or six options, and we used every single option and moved them over into an ordered response. Those do not disappear, so keep them on your exams. But now we have another option in an extended drag or drop. And I have an example of that where we may have multiple options on one side, but we only bring over what we need. So maybe we have uh, greater than six options, maybe eight, 10, but we only need four. So they have options to choose from. Then we have a uh, drop down or close items, which are essentially fill in the blank. We've never had those in the past. We've kind of considered those knowledge and they are, but they're being used clinically to help us do a rationale. And then there's extended multiple response. We'll talk about what that looks like as we go along. And then there's all the standalone items that are, uh, that are possible. And uh, nor normally by this time I ask people where, uh, how many of these are gonna be used. We'll, we'll do that at the end. So I, I'll talk about uh, what that exam will look like in the end itself. So, just starting with matrix, I have some templates that are available. So as you look at the slides and be able to use them, you can figure out how you can do this. Uh, if you have a testing platform, they're already gonna have that set up for you. But if you're looking for classroom, this is a template that would be easy to build. This, you build your case study on one side of the page and you work with the answers on the other side of the page. And a matrix here, this arrangement is actually just a mathematical problem. They're attempting to be able to grade a larger number of potential actions associated here. Here, I've chosen a multiple choice. This wording is important, multiple choice template. Uh, so as 
here after receiving orders. So this would be sometime later on in the scenario for each action item, click, click to specify whether the, the action would be indicated, not essential, contraindicated. So essentially here, it's a box where you're gonna put something, a cue, an action, a solution, evaluation, and then you're going to ask them a question. Now, of course, it cannot be indicated, non-essential, and contraindicated, so there can be only one answer per line. Each line gets its own grade. Now, here's the thing to notice, the subtlety to this. There are circles in these boxes. If there are circles, there's only one possible answer. If there are squares, then there could be more than one possible answer in a line, and we would use partial credit scoring then. So we'll go on and look at that a little bit. Um, this one, since I used the wording after receiving orders for each action below, click to specify, this is generating a solution. It helps you to decide where in the clinical judgment measurement model or six pack that you need to go. Here's another example using intervention. So this would be evaluating incomes for each action below, click to specify why the action will be effective, ineffective, or unrelated. So this one would be evaluating outcomes. Now take a look over here. You can also have just effective and unrelated. You don't have to have three sets of boxes, but you do need a comparison along here. Here is an example of cue recognition and assessing the client, which findings are essential to follow up. Then we have assessment findings listed and whether or not it would be essential or unimportant. So we had our built case study, and this would be how you would organize for cue recognition. So here, the takeaway from the last three slides is that I can use the matrix across the area of the clinical judgment model all the way across. And it's based upon how I'm asking the question in order to be able to use this. All right. Here is an example. Let's take a look at these words right up here. Multiple response. Now I am dealing not with multiple choice, but multiple response. So that means there are squares in the boxes and that I'm going to be able to pick more than one potential action. The nurse is reviewing the client's assessment data. For each assessment finding below, click to specify if the finding is consistent with the disease process of, and then three diseases would be listed there. So first I put the finding, maybe fever. I'm just gonna choose something, fever. Is it, do we have fever with disease one? Do we have fever with disease two? Would you have fever with disease three? So it, there could be potentially more than one answer. So. Please include on your slides, note there's at least one answer in each row, but there may be more than one answer per row. If that'll help cut down on the confusion associated when the student takes the exam. All right. This one, of course, is analyzing, analyzing cues. It's not cue response. It is analyzing cues. All right, so let's get started and do a case study. And a diarrhea of unknown origin, layer three, all types are used in the clinical judgment model. I'm also going to give you opportunities to see it in multiple technologies again. So let's take a look. I'm going to start with highlighted item or enhanced hotspot. Those are wording that's used from the National Council. I want you to recognize it, whichever words are used. So let's start with the first part. Select answers by highlighting predefined words or phrases. We can select, we can deselect the highlighted areas if we don't like what we've chosen. And then these types of items will allow an individual to read a portion of the client's medical record, whether wherever it is, wherever we've asked them to look. And then we can, then it would select the words or phrases and answer the item. So let's move into it. Ah, breathe. Okay, so let's start with the very first part. A 64-year-old client is admitted with liquid diarrhea, vomiting for the last three days. Medical history includes hypertension, hyperlipidemia, a myocardial infarction two years ago, hypothyroidism. The client's COVID-19 test is negative. A stool culture is pending and a CT of the abdomen and pelvis is scheduled. The client's findings are listed below. Now, 
Let's move over to the right side. And here's the question. After reviewing the current findings, what would be the essential to follow up on? So it's asking us to click the rows and highlight the findings that would be essential to follow up, highlight only rows that require follow up, to deselect a row, click the row again. So I'm still giving them instructions so they can follow those clearly. It's not attempting to be, it's not attempting to be um, scary, it's not attempting to be anything else. So in cue recognition here, I've asked them to look at the data. So they're going to choose from here what would be essential to follow up on. So um, the other thing to notice after the current findings, you may have your current findings listed first. You may have your, your previous findings listed second. It could be the other way around. You know, as we read a book, we've gotten used to current findings being in one place. Um, remember, they're, they're reading on a computer screen. The current findings will be a tab. I move the current findings first because when they open a screen at the hospital, they see current first and they see past labs or past data in another area. So you do it. You do you. Figure it out. Just help the student to recognize to look at what this is current and not make decisions based upon four hours ago. It's asking after the current findings. So these would be highlightable data that would need to be follow up on. I also refuse, I, I also um, reduced the confusion by allowing it to light up the whole column so that they aren't choosing from the old, okay? So here we go. There we have it. So they highlight those items and this grading is gonna be discussed at the end, but they'll get their points and it will provide the, uh, the ability to be able to highlight and the ability to be able to deselect as well. Now, let's look at another cue recognition written by another uh, technology and let's do extended multiple response for the same question. It allows a candidate to select one or more answer options at a time. This type is comparable to the current NCLEX multiple response items, but with more than one option, which gives us partial credit scoring potential. Now, the one I chose to offer you today, though, is not partial credit. I wanted to be able to have them pick the six findings that require immediate follow-up. Okay, so pick the six findings. So this one instead, it's a multiple response, all right, but it's what the National Council defines in the technology as select in. If you tell me, if, they if we say to them, there are a certain number of findings, then this makes it where they must pick the six. They can't pick anything outside of the six. If they do, they miss the whole question. So this grading is is helping us to understand that we can still grade some of our other ones using select in. It's either all or nothing. So they would choose them and get them right or not. Okay, so we've done cue recognition. Let's move next to analyzing cues. It's the same scenario. I've not changed a thing. Which condition is the client at risk for developing? We're just having them think or that they are they have developed. So let's take a look. Uh, in this particular case, I have an extended multiple response. If you look at it, there are more than six. On the previous exam, we wrote these questions. We were limited to five or six options. To have an extended multiple response means that you have more than six I've chosen seven here. Please be careful to not extend beyond what your platform says. And I believe the maximum is 10. I think we would have to uh, look at that a little further and maybe that'll change as time goes on. But be careful to stay within those parameters. Now, in this particular case, it would be partial credit. So they could answer this question. And if they picked the the three that you have for your grading, um, then they would get solidly partial credit for each one. If they pick a fourth one, 
So therefore they, they could subtract that one, those sorts of things. So in the grading for that, um, you, can, you can decide how it is you need for the technology and what you need for the grading. So now I wanna use the matrix multiple response and I'm going to um, do another one of the analyzing cues. I did an extended one. Let's look at this. The nurse is reviewing the client's assessment data for each assessment finding below. Click to specify if it's consistent with the disease process of fluid volume deficit, sepsis, or infection colitis. So you could write this question this way. I, we're studying the same thing in the clinical judgment measurement model or six pack here. So they would have, it does, is fluid uh, volume deficit, uh, diarrhea part of that? Is sepsis diarrhea, infectious colitis? Is decreased weight part of fluid volume deficit, part of sepsis, part of infectious colitis? Reduced Glasgow coma scale, fluid volume deficit. So each one of these, they're going to evaluate and come up with an answer that they can go for. All right, now we're moving on to prioritizing. I'm going to use a close item. I'm actually going to use a close item to uh, a rationale, and I'll talk about grading for that as well. All of the grading is written at the very end, but I am I'm putting it here just to help us to clarify. I'll allow candidates to select one option from a drop down list. Um, I usually tell the students and I tell the faculty as well, there's still no spelling on the NCLEX. There's no spelling on the NCLEX. So if there is a blank, then what we have in the blank is um, allowing us to take a, a list of which we have to come up with, of course, in our template, a list of potential options that they'll choose from. And the word will move as they select it. The, the, uh, the word will move into the sentence. All right, there'd be more than one drop down list in the close item. These drop down lists can be used as words or phrases within a sentence, within tables and charts. So let's take a look. The, the, the uh, same, we're still de dealing with the 64 year old client with diarrhea. So the prioritized hypothesis question would be complete the following sentences by choosing from a list of options. The client is at greatest risk for developing X as, as an evidence by Y. So this is a rationale. You have to have both right. This one's paired. They get all of the grade because it's paired. If it didn't have because of or evidence by, et cetera, then I could give them partial credit, a point for each blank that we have. But this one is actually paired. They have to get both right to get it right. So in this particular case, we give them a set. They choose from that set and come up with the options. All right, matrix again, is just a mathematical problem. They wanted to be able to ask more uh, potential options, but they couldn't keep it stable. So the best way to get more information about what someone knows and keep it stable is to segment it. And that's what matrix is. So here we are generating solutions and I'm using matrix multiple choice. Our client is still the same. Our scenario is still the same. I've had nothing unfold. I am telling the student where to go after reviewing the nurse's notes for each action below, click to specify whether the action would be indicated, non-essential or contraindicated. Again, I have action potentials over here for each of one. They have to make a decision. They get one point per each row associated with this. Uh, if they do not get the row, they get a zero on that row. So there's a potential here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'm just going to call six points for simplicity. And, and if they get each one of them right, then up to six points for each one they miss. It's not subtracted, it's just zero. Uh, so if they miss one, it would just be one less from six. All right, here's a take action. 
moving on in our clinical judgment model here and in take action and something unfolded. I really want them to see. Now we have orders. Take review after reviewing orders, which orders would require clarification prior to the administration. Complete the following sentences by choosing from the drop down list. Again, I'm using a closed item, but this time I'm using a triad. The nurse should not administer blank and blank due to blank. So if we take a look over here, we have to do some clinical judgment. We can see that we have things for blood pressure and heart disease that are listed here. We also have a blood pressure that's 96 over 55. So if they're making clinical judgment, they would recognize there's some things here I would need to hold and call the provider uh, regarding those orders. So it would be in a drop down list. All of the medications to me, when I write this question and put it into my platform, every single order would show up on both lists and they would have to select from all of the orders which one of these they would not administer. And then I would have several options here uh, for the possibility of why not. Uh, maybe something about, you know, something about um, not giving the IV because they may get overloaded, something, you know, you can choose all of your distractors any way you wish. All right. Here's another example of take action. After receiving orders for which of these below, click to specify whether the action will be indicated or contraindicated. It's just another way to ask the same question using a different technology. You may use this technology this year, next technology next year, not have to write everything over and over and over again. And then evaluating outcomes and taking a look at that. Again, everything is the same, but something has unfolded. After evaluating the client's current findings, and if you notice, we have a third column here that says current. We have an hour ago and we have five hours ago. Uh, the client's uh, findings, the client's blank is improved based on blank and blank. This is a triad. Again, they have to get in a triad rating, they have to get the one correct. And then we have blank and blank. They have to get at least one of those correct in order to get the credit. All right. Now we're moving along to comparing and contrasting standalone items. We take a look here at case study. This is a group of six items that represent the, the nursing clinical judgment measurement model. It requires the entry level nurse to make multiple clinical decisions throughout the spectrum of clinical judgment model. It uses an action model approach by combining individual components in a structured format. These standalone items have a stated or an implied diagnosis. It includes clinical, inf uh, clinical information for a specific client. It requires an entry level nurse to make one or more than one clinical decision at a time. So now focus for a second. Every single one of the technologies that we have talked about can be a standalone item. It isn't restricted to any one of them. And in fact, they have actually added um, one more, something called Bowtie. We'll go through that in a second. So I don't want to repeat all the technologies we've actually already covered. So I'm going to try uh, to, to jump into this. Um, I'm going to say, Jennifer, I saw that and I agree. It is a bit overwhelming and it's way overwhelming to try and cover it all in less than an hour. Uh, but I'm glad that it's actually recorded and you can take it a piece at a time. So let's keep moving forward and let's take a look at some options here for standalone items. I'm going to start with that extended drag and drop because I did not use any of those in the original one. Let's take a look. Uh, extended drag and drop allows the candidate to move or place response options into answer spacing. This is exactly the same type of items that NCLEX already had for ordered response as we discussed, but this time you may not use all the response options. In some items, there may be more than one response option for the spaces. So let's take a look. Here's an example. The nurse is providing care for four clients on the med surge floor. 
drag and drop the best initial action to take with each client listed below. Here we go. We have potential actions to take here on the left. We have the condition and best initial reaction to take on the, on the right. So the client with the blood glucose of 700 on morning labs, the client with asthma, with expiratory wheezes, shortness of breath, glass calcoma scale from 13 to eight. So I have to come over here on each one of these clients and draw something over. If I've used it already, I cannot use it again. It will disappear on the left as I move it to the right. You also have not answered the question until you hit next. So they can move these around, choose something and decide, wait, I like the other answer better and move things around again. So overall, there's time to think about it and move all those in. So out of this list of, I believe I have seven, I only need four. So that's an extended an example of an extended drag and drop. Okay, standalone item for bow tie. That's the next biggest one we need to discuss even if we don't get to the rest. Taking a look at bow tie items, they look like a bow tie. We have a, again, our uh, client will be on the left-hand side. Our question and its potential answers will be on the right. The nurse is caring for a 58-year-old client who's undergone a renal biopsy. Vital signs pre-procedure. You can see are listed there. The client is 30 minutes post-procedure with current vital signs of. So I have to tell, I have to tell the participant about the patient and it's time sensitive. So they recognize it's not what I would do for all renal biopsy patients. It's this patient at this time with these vital signs. So they have to compare what's here, temperature of 99.1, heart rate of 112, blood pressure of 100 over 62, respiratory rate of 22 from their vital signs a half hour ago. So that's the whole idea. Now taking a look here, I have to complete the diagram by dragging the choices below to specify what condition is most likely experiencing, two actions the nurse should take to address that condition, and two parameters the nurse will monitor to assess the client's progress. To me, as you teach this to your students, it's much easier to go with the condition that they are most likely experiencing, the condition most likely experiencing. Uh, so that would move up first. This would tell me, give me ideas, to easier answer, to be able to move it up into the action to take and then make decisions about how, if they are going to get better or not, what parameters I'm actually gonna mon monitor. So here's an example of a finished bow tie. We were uh, attempting to get the student to understand shock and show us that they knew what to know about shock, uh, how they would care for the client based on the options that they have here. Okay, and then of course our parameters model uh, to monitor up here on the right. All right, one other that we haven't had in terms of technology here, I'd like to take a second to do, and that would be multiple response and grouping. Multiple response and grouping, that is where we have a multiple response that looks like this, this table. A 64-year-old client, this is all the same that we had up before. I use the same, uh, so we didn't have to read all of that again. We've got that diarrhea going on. Which assessments are critical for the nurse to follow with the client listed? Uh, so they would have multiple response in each one of these groupings. These groupings are there to help the grading. So since it's gastrointestinal, I'm going to want to follow bowel sounds, uh, diarrhea, um, nausea and vomiting. I'm not sure I need to monitor their abdominal growth. So three out of the four of these are right. They get partial credit. This line gets whatever credit. If they pick three of these and they got all three right, they would get a three here. Cardiovascular, taking a look whether or not, do I really need hemodynamics for this? Do I really need uh, to monitor O2 saturation? Do I, I, I need to follow their EKG? Uh, so this gives the clinical judgment section in here, all of these. All right. Uh, extended response. I think we used one of these, but again, I wanted to remind you more than six, less than 10. Um, I'd stick with nine or less. 
uh, and go from there. Which of these clinical findings for a client receiving promethazine hydrochloride, 12.5 milligrams IV, require immediate intervention, select all that apply. This is a standalone pharmacology, um, uh, medi uh, so medication in terms of what I would evaluate for undesired, not undesirable effects, but toxic effects. So essentially, they're going to choose from that list um, and, and come up with answers. I have several slides here. Uh, we do not have time to discuss each one and whether or not you like my pharmacology questions or not, but I just want you to show, uh, to show you what those look like. This would be a partial credit. So they would get a point for everyone they choose and they would get a minus point for everything they choose actually wrong. All right. Let's take the last minute or two that I have with you and talk before we start asking for questions and look at NG and scoring. I got this from the National Council State Board of Nursing. You can pull it off as easily as I can when looking at the next generation. Uh, many of the platforms that you're using now do not have all their technology straight. I, I want you um, I, I do want you to be able to get all of the scoring rules as best you can and to help the student realize that this partial credit scoring is actually going in their favor. Also, so zero, the traditional or classic approach that we have here, uh, you're going to use for multiple choice, for matrix multiple choice on each line, for multiple response select in, as we have discussed, I've selected how many out of this list. Um, close, drop down, drag and drop, drop down table, bow tie items. Each one of these are the classic approach. Each one are classic approach. Plus minus scoring rule. This is what we use when it's unspecified number of responses. So select all that apply. They either, if they pick the right answer, they get a plus. If they chose a wrong answer, they get a minus. Okay, same thing for highlighting in a text. So that data that we went over earlier when we highlighted it, if they picked it correctly and highlighted it, they got a point. If they picked one that you don't believe needs to be followed with that client, then it's a minus. So all of that is there. All right, you cannot go below zero. And they did tell us here that the highlighting text, the maximum number is 10. They're very specific, no more than 10 things. I can't keep it stable, can't hold validity. Okay, and then rationale scoring requires full paired information. That was when we were going over those closed items where both X and Y must be correct to earn a point. And the max point in a, uh, uh, is uh, one point for say a dyad and two points for a triad because I have paired information. They might get one of the second right or maybe not. All right, we're just about there. One last thing to say, this to me is the burden for us to get to with their exams, even in our curriculum. The test composition for the National Council has moved up to 85 potential options. It's been that for PN for a long time. I study both sides of National Council's information, R and PN. So 15 of those are still unscored. So this means they had to move up 10 items from the original one. Remember, this started three days ago. It's already in place. There's no discussion anymore. Discussion's all done. There are at least promised three clinical judgment measurement models. So there's no less than three for these 85 questions. And you can do the math and see how many questions of that are falling in there. Then they are also telling us in the 15, you may have as many as two. So a candidate may see as many as five of the clinical judgment measurement model. They may also see standalones in those 15 instead of two clinical judgment models. They may have all 15 in standalones, one clinical judgment model and the rest standalones. Uh, they may also uh, receive standalones after the 85. So there's a certain 10%, the National Council said at one point, I'm gonna hold on to what they say at one point, that 10% of the items over 85 will be standalone items and or potentially bow ties. So that does it. 
I think that we have reached the end. So we, um, we can start looking at questions. Hi, Tina. Thank you so much for all of that wonderful information. We do mm -hmm. have some questions that I want to propose to you. Sure. Um, this individual said that they will be teaching pharmacology this summer. Can you give some tips on how to create questions that are specific to pharmacology with the next generation styles? Yes, you know, you just saw one. Um, so uh, that is useful. You can actually even develop a bow tie where a client has a condition and that there is an order for a medication and that they have to have food with it or no food with it. Uh, and then how I would evaluate the response of the medication on the other side or, or whether or not I'm evaluating the medication's effect, good or bad, or undesirable effects. So these are the, you can develop pharmacology questions with throughout all of the standalones um, and bow tie. So there's a place that you can contribute in their practice and getting ready for the exam itself. So it could truly be about a patient and how they're going to be cared for with their medication and not so much about the disease. If you give a scenario, you can also give the orders for the medications and work it based upon that. I hope that was helpful. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if you'll know the answer to this one, but will the NGN be available now at all global sites in which folks in other countries sit for the exam? Well, I don't work for the National Council, but that is my understanding, that it will be global, that Pearson View is the provider and the next generation is throughout everywhere that uh, the National Council is testing. So it'd be every Pearson View facility. They use what is given to them from the National Council to provide that. So the answer would be yes. Perfect. And I think one uh, resource that we put in the chat is the um, NCSBN website. I put that in the chat for people to access. So if you do have questions, they have some detailed information there, along with sample questions and the exam preview for uh, people to look at. There's a lot of chatter in the chat about uh, lab values. Will the lab values be available throughout the entire exam or only for the NGN specific questions? I, I'm afraid I do not have that answer, but I, I, I really do not have that answer. That would be a question to pose on the National Council's website. They're very responsive. So you can, you can pose that question up in the corner. I am absolutely sure they're in there for the next generation. I'm just not sure if they have gone back over their very extensive test bank and given labs all over or not. Yeah, I think that's a great response. Thank you, Tina. And I we appreciate your honesty um, and your transparency if you're not sure um, with the answer. Can you please discuss the role in teaching the clinical judgment model to students? Um, this person says, I know it's been stated to not stop teaching nursing process, but can you speak to the role of each one? Yes, I mean, I would not test the student on the model itself. I would just, in, for me, I'm incorporating it and I'm still, I still have active teaching with students as well as faculty. And I, I am just incorporating it in and discussing that it would be important to put this piece into the nursing model. So I'm, I'm, I am calling them close to being one. It's more about how they will be tested or measured and not so much trying to change this wonderful wheel that we've been using call, you know, called the nursing process. So I am bringing it in and showing how, how this is an important and critical piece that can help their learning by moving along this, this template. Um, I also bring in clinical judgment models throughout 
my entire curriculum and every single area of the curriculum. It really doesn't matter what you're teaching as far as I'm concerned. The end of the day, I take some time to run through one of these models over the content that I just taught for the day uh, or for the hour or the two hours so they can see uh, how this might be posed and so we can have great um, discussions in classrooms over these items. And of course, then of course, um, your uh, being able to take care of it, not, not just here, it needs to be done as well at the bedside when you do clinical and in your simulations. What a wonderful place to put it in simulation. Perfect. I think that's a lovely answer. Um, in regards to the slide that we have up, one person wants you to expound a little bit more on the maximum exam 135 scored items and total 150 with unscored. Can you just explain that a little bit again? I sure can. Um, the National Council says there will be 15 unscored items. Those items are those they're trying to uh, uh, check out, make sure they're valid, and that the, uh, what the, you know, not so much what the answers are, but making sure that there is, uh, uh, that, that those 15 items are ready to test, plus to know where they are on the difficulty scale. Uh, so all of that's being done with those 15 items. Those 15 items will only be in the first 85. After question number 85, so 86 to 150 are questions that count. So those students will be you know, that go beyond 85. I believe the average is somewhere between 115 and 120 generally. But it, every, it, anytime they're sitting down over 85, all of those count. So all the unscored items are right there up front. Perfect. Yeah, I think that is definitely clarifying. Um, can be confusing, all of the numbers and trying to get, get it straight. So we appreciate that extra explanation. Just looking through here, I think we have one more question in regards to um, the select that, all that apply. So will a normal select all that apply have the plus or minus, not just the extended re multiple responses? That answer is yes. They extended the select all that apply scoring rule through the whole task, not just the next generation. So therefore, the select all applies on your regular exams now should convert to being partial credit. All of them. And this question is um, interesting. I hadn't thought of this uh, before. Will students ever be required to type the unit for the medication question, such as ML or tabs, or will this be provided for them? This is provided for them. Awesome. Perfect. Well, uh, Tina, we are coming close to the end of our time together. Do you have any parting words before I close us out today? Um, I don't believe so. I wish you all well and hope that uh, whatever it is that you're teaching in nursing, uh, that you're uh, embracing this new wonderful clinical judgment model. Uh, it'll help you to uh, not reteach nursing, not learn new nursing in a new way, but a new way to provide it to the student to help them on their journey of critical thinking. And I thank you all so much for your time. Thank you. We are so thankful for all of this great information that you shared with us today. Sigma is grateful that you took time to share with our audience, and we definitely look forward to hearing more from you in the future. We yeah. hope you enjoyed this webinar. As a reminder, one week from today, you will be emailed a link to the evaluation for you to obtain your Nursing Continuing Professional Development Certificate. Be sure to check out Sigma's upcoming webinars, podcasts, and resources to support you and your colleagues at sigmanursing.org. Once again, we thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing more of you at the next webinar in this series brought to you by Odin and Sigma. <laughs>